Hey guys, Taipei is outside my window, which means one thing, Computex is here. It actually begins tomorrow, but I'm recording this a day in advance because Qualcomm gave us an advanced preview of the new Snapdragon 8 CX platform, which is going to come out in a couple of months. Uh, it's going to power laptops just like this one, the Lenovo Yoga. This is last year's Snapdragon 850 model, which I've been using for about the past six months. And uh, it's been good to me overall. It's been fast performing, it's been instant on as promised, instant online. And it's delivered all day battery life. And honestly, it's just been a great little notebook. I love it. And I'm looking forward to the 8CX because who doesn't want faster anything? Uh, the 8CX is going to bring uh, faster GPU, faster CPU. It's going to be more efficient, of course. Uh, it's going to be uh, built on a 7 nanometer process, which is also the case for the X55 and X24 modems. Uh, and Qualcomm is proud of this. As other companies are struggling to, to get low yield or high yields on their... Uh, low process technologies, Qualcomm is bringing it up about doing 7 nanometer everything. Companies can still request 10 nanometer if they want it, but why would they? It doesn't really make sense. But one of the things ATS is really promising is faster performance, of course, and that's good because that's what a lot of people want to hear. A common complaint I've heard about people wanting to adopt this platform is that it's slow, but I can honestly say I don't think that's fair, but it does depend on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to do video editing, then yeah, maybe it's going to be a little bit slow, but for on-the-go office work or writing or just web browsing, chatting, whatever, basic things, it's not going to feel much different than an Intel notebook. And I can actually prove this because at CES this year, I brought two Lenovo Yogas with me. One was an Intel-powered uh, one. Uh, it was 7th gen, so it's like maybe two years old, a little bit older than that. But as I was working away, it was getting laggy, and I was just thinking to myself, oh, come on, Snapdragon. And then I realized it was the Intel notebook I was using because we had Jamie, our other editor, using this one uh, instead there. So yeah, it was that was my wake up call, I guess, a little bit. Uh, just don't jump to conclusions too quickly and just uh, realize that a lot of software is unoptimized, which is really, really uh, sad, but um, it is getting better on this platform. And uh, a couple of months ago, Mozilla actually released an ARM64 build for uh, Firefox. And I don't use that browser personally, but apparently it made a massive difference because I was talking to Miriam Dwar earlier from the Mobile Tech Pad podcast, and she was talking about how it made such a night and day difference going from one to the next. And that's the exact same kind of thing you want to hear because when another ARM64 build comes out, people are going to get excited to jump on it. And of course, when Firefox came out, I was thinking, I, have, I would love a, a Chromium ARM64. And I'm happy to say that we are told that there is one coming now. So that means that the Chromium web browser is going to have uh, ARM64 native, the Chrome browser and also others that use Chrome, which will be including the new uh, Microsoft Edge browser. Uh, and I'm hoping my favorite browser, Vivaldi, will also get it. Um, and I highly recommend you check out that browser if you've never heard of it, because it's very good. And it's also the most customizable browser you'll probably ever see. But again, a lot of people are complaining about performance and non-native builds, but again, it's getting better. We were also told that... Uh, Electron is getting an update to ARM64, which is pretty big because that powers such apps as like the Discord standalone app and also the Slack standalone app. And even better than that, we were told Unity Engine, the game engine, is also ported to uh, ARM64 soon. And that's great for developers who might want to work on the laptop a little bit, but it's even better for those gamers who want to game on the laptops. Unity powers so many games nowadays, not just on the desktops, but also mobile. So having native ARM support is going to be a very good thing for the gaming possibilities on this. We were shown a demo of, uh, I think it's a built-in demo into the engine of uh, a, a boat, a speedboat just racing around a certain path. And it was getting about 55 frames per second on average at 1080p resolution. So it was not too bad. And it was good to see. But in advance of this event, we were told uh, it was going to be about benchmarking, which is kind of interesting because we don't often hear about Qualcomm talking about actual benchmark numbers on these things in terms of uh, gaming and such. And, and, like, when was the last time you heard Qualcomm talk about PC mark? I don't remember a time at all. But uh, the company actually had UL here to talk, and uh, UL bought FutureMark maybe five or six years ago, and FutureMark was the makers of PC mark and uh, 3D mark, VR mark, all those marks. And so... Today, a new PC Mark build is coming out that's going to enable a couple of new tests, including application benchmarks and battery life tests. And as you can probably guess, both of them run fine on the AC PCs. So we're going to spend a minute here to talk about some performance because there are pretty interesting results here. 
the competitor that Qualcomm went up against was a notebook of no name, which was a Dell XPS, which has, which has a Core i5 8250U. Both platforms have 8 gigs of RAM and a 250 gig NVMe. Uh, the older machine, or the Intel machine, had the 1809 build of Windows 10, while the, the Snapdragon has 1903. I don't know if that would actually make any difference. In my personal test before coming to Taipei, I couldn't see any real differences between those builds. But the application benchmark in PCMark tackles things like Excel, PowerPoint, and uh, Word, uh, basic office apps that people use. And so the score represents how, how fast uh, the work can get done on the laptop. Uh, not necessarily related to battery life at this point, but breaking things down with Excel, Intel did win this one with 4,600 points at the peak, whereas the 8CX platform peaked at 4,100. Uh, but Qualcomm gained a little bit in the PowerPoint test, moving up to 4,200 while, well, actually, it's just 100 points above Intel. And then Word, Qualcomm gained quite significantly here because on the Intel platform, it hit 3,100 points, whereas on the Qualcomm one, it hit 3,600 points. That's a big gain there. Uh, but with the... I think this is the Chromium-based Edge browser. On the Intel platform, it peaked at 4,600, whereas on the HCX, it was, might as well say, 5,300, which is really good. But overall, Intel hit 3,970 at its peak, while the Qualcomm platform hit 4,139. And moving on to battery life, this is an interesting one, because there's three different tests, apps, video, and idle. And idle is the worst one pretty much ever, and UL admits this itself. It's just there because it's, it's, a, it's a measurement of some sort anyway. And when a vendor releases a notebook, they're using the, uh, the idle, the idle uh, metric, which is essentially booting up your laptop and leaving it there at the desktop. That's all it is. So your laptop's not doing anything whatsoever. Now, I have to ask you, as a consumer, is that the number you want to be given when you're, at, you're told you what the battery life is going to be? No, of course not. But, as far as that goes, the 8CX notebook peaks at 23 and a half hours uh, idle, where, so that is a true all-day notebook, whereas the Intel competitor hit uh, just under 16 hours, so, which is still pretty admirable, it's not bad. But the apps test, the Intel platform hit 10 hours at peak, whereas the Snapdragon one hit 17, so a 70% 70 increase in battery life is quite impressive there. Uh, video kind of carries over to the video there where the Intel platform peaked at 12 hours and the Snapdragon 8CX peaked at 20 hours, uh, which again is very impressive and does match what I've actually seen with this as well. I don't watch too many videos on it, but when I have benchmarked this to see how it does, it did seem to last pretty much forever. And this isn't just about uh, applications either, this is also about uh, gaming. And uh, I don't think this is a PC mark game unless it's built into PC Mark, but it's also available in 3D Mark, this Night Raid uh, benchmark. But the Qualcomm does very well here as well, which might not be too much of a surprise because Intel's integrated graphics have not been extremely powerful. Uh, the next gen Ice Lake will be a lot more powerful, so it'd be interesting to see how that actually compares to the 8CX. But anyway, the overall score on the Intel was about 50-50, whereas on the Qualcomm 8CX it was 5800. So that's another great gain. Uh, when you break it down to the graphics score, though, the Intel hit 5,200, while the uh, 8CX hit 6,300 almost. And overall, for the CPU score, the Intel competitor came ahead with 4,500 points and 42 or 4,100 points for the Qualcomm. So that's pretty good to see. And that basically wraps up performance and all we know right now. Uh, at this point, we're basically waiting for some laptops to hit the market and uh, so that we can actually benchmark them ourselves and see how they actually do. And uh, I don't know the first one that's going to come out for certain. I believe it's a Lenovo, or at least the first 5G-capable one will be Lenovo. And uh, i got to say, it honestly is an exciting time because I'm looking forward to seeing this chip and see how it performs because I have used this a lot, and it hasn't let me down. And again, yes, it's a little bit slow compared to some other notebooks and other uh, high-end equipment I use. I, have, I, I benchmark high-end CPUs and GPUs pretty much every day. So yeah, I'm a little bit spoiled that way. But still, when I move to this, I'm not feeling like I'm lacking that much or anything like that. And again, I mentioned earlier about that CES experience where I was blaming a slowdown issue on Qualcomm when I wasn't even using the Qualcomm notebook, which I'm ashamed to say. But 
that's the way it is sometimes. But anyway, once we're able to test it out, we'll uh, definitely give you some hard numbers and also experiences on uh, how the newer hardware performs. But uh, that's all for now. So uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do as we're trying to grow uh, and get our name out there a little bit. So also, and also if you have any requests or anything like that, please uh, let us know. And if you have any questions about 8CX, please leave a comment and we'll get back to you when we can. And we'll shoot off a question to Qualcomm if we have to. So thank you very much for watching.